Do you want to learn how to create your own custom login components for your Amplify applications? In this video, that is exactly what I'm going to teach you how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. In this video, we're going to be looking at our Amplify application that we've been building in this series, and we're going to be making a couple of changes. We're going to be taking some of the parts out and putting them into their own components, and then we're going to be creating our own login. This means that we don't get that default login screen anytime a new user opens the page which will be important in the next video in this series. Make sure you watch it to the end because I've got a little extra bit of video for you guys who make it to the end, which can help you if you want to follow along with this series. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the code and see how we can do this. So now that we're in the code, we're gonna have a look through our app and then start taking some steps to update it. So we have a single app component with four different states. We then have the ability to fetch songs. We can toggle a song playing or pausing. We then have the ability to add a like to a song. And then we have our app. It's got a header with a sign out button, which is an amplify component. And then it has this component here, which is a list of songs where we can like, and we can also toggle our songs. We then have our little react player at the bottom of that component. And at the very bottom, we also have the ability to add a new song. This add song component is found a little bit lower down has its own little bit of state and allows us to opt it to add new songs to S3 and to our GraphQL database. So the first thing what we, that we want to do is we want to extract both the add song component as well as we want to extract this whole song list into its own components. So I'm going to do that by creating a new components folder. And in there, we're going to create two folders, one folder for the song list and one folder for the add song. So with the song list, I have copied it into its own component. And that was relatively simple, as most of the logic was contained in there. The song list took a little bit more effort, making sure to extract all of the state, the use effects, as well as some of the functions such as toggle and fetch songs from inside the app.jsx. Now what we need to do is go into our app.jsx and update that to use these new components. So in here, what we can do is we can actually remove all of our state and these functions that we've moved into our song list. We can then also find the song list div and we can actually delete the whole div just like that and replace that with song list just like that and that song list if we look up here has automatically been imported from our components inside our song list where we used to have right down at the bottom the add song, which would point to a local file. This add song is now imported from the add song component. 
Now that we've done that, we can move into our app.jsx one more time and save this. With this all done, we can go over to our app and log in as we did before. And now that we've logged in, all of this works as before, but it is using our components, which leaves us with an app that is much cleaner and easier to work with. Next, we're gonna add some routing. So to do that, we need to import a set of variables from React Router DOM and also install the React Router DOM inside this package. So if you open a new tab and run npm install dash dash save and react dash router dash dom and install that and I'm going to switch back to my first terminal and that will install this router. To change our app to use the router, what we can do is wrap this in the router that we have just imported, like that. And the way that router works is we can now add a different route around a component that we want to show only on certain paths. So for us, that is song list. We only want to show song list when the path is exactly forward slash. So I'm just going to paste that in like that. So if the path is forward slash, which is the home page, only show song list. With this, we can now remove the with authenticator and we're going to be actually managing our own state. With that, we need to go up to the top of our app and we're going to add some extra lo logic. So we're going to have a state. So we're going to have logged in or set logged in. And we're going to set that initially to be false. We now need a way to check from AWS Amplify whether the user is logged in already or whether they are not. And the way that we do that is with a function. And I'm going to call that assess logged in state. And what that's going to do is that's going to call the auth method, which comes from amplify. So we need to add that up here. So add auth as an import from AWS amplify and that has a variety of different methods the one we're looking at is current authenticated user and if there is a user logged in this promise will resolve triggering the then block that is going to set the user to be logged in as true if there is no user they'll throw an error which will be caught and logged in will be set to false. So now that we have that function, we want to make sure that it's called and we're going to call it using the use effect. So when this app first starts up, use effect will be triggered, which will call assess logged in state, which will then set the logged in value to be true or false, depending on whether the user is logged in or not. Now, one thing we also can update is this Amplify sign out. By default, uh, we have this, but we can actually change this to be a button from our material UI library. And I'm going to set some parameters here. So we're going to have an on click of sign out and then just some parameters here displaying how it's going to look, and then the text of log out. So now it's saying that button and sign out are not defined. So button, if we look 
in here for material UI, we can say that we want to add it in here. And now we need to define our sign out function. That is going to be a new function inside our app. And our function is just like this. It's going to be an async function. And it tries to call auth.signout. And if it does succeed with that, it then sets the logged in state to false. Else it just console logs out the error message. Now that we have that, we can save again. And that has worked. So what we can do is go over to our app and change the URL to 3000 and we will see our app. If we refresh the page, we are still logged in. If we now click the log out button and refresh the page, obviously now we can't see the table which shows that we are logged out. Back in our app, we also now need to add a login. So the way you're going to do that is take this logged in variable up here and change a bit of code here. So we're going to be using a ternary equation. So if we are logged in, we're going to show the logout button. If we are not logged in, then it is going to return a link which wraps a button saying log in. And I'm going to change this URL to sign in and save that. Once this is finished compiling, if we go over to our app and refresh the page. So we're currently not logged in, which is why we can't see our list of songs. If we click on login, we can now get redirected to the sign in URL. So the next step is to actually add the component which allows a user to sign in. So we're going to create a new component called sign in and a new file called index.jsx. So in this component, we have a username and password state which is connected to two text fields. And the first text field is for a username, second for a password. And what I'm also going to do is add a type on here of password, which will mean anything typed in here is filled out with stars so that other people can't see your password. They can then have a sign in button once they've entered their details which will try and sign the user in. This sign in uses the auth again and does auth.signin passing up the username and password. If that succeeds, then we call history.push. And this history is something that is imported from the React router DOM as use history and allows us to add new URLs to the history, which basically redirects the user to that URL. Once that's all happened, we have an on sign in, which is a function that we pass into this component so that we can tell the app to change the state of sign in. So if we go to our app.jsx and down here, we have our path of forward slash pointing at song list. What we want to do is add a new route and this is going to be a route with a path of sign in and a forward slash at the start of that. And inside this, we are going to have a our sign in component just like that and on sign in which is the function that we've passed into here we're saying 
that whenever you sign in, you can just reassess the login state. One thing we might need to do now is import this sign in component. So import sign in from dot slash components slash sign in and save everything. So that is just a compiling typo down here. So that is just missing a G. And if we save that and we go across to our app, anytime we're at the sign in, it shows our username and password. So if I populate this with my username and password and hit sign in, it will redirect us using that history to the home page. So in this video, what we've done is we've taken our existing app, we've extracted some of the code and put those bits of code into their own components. We've then taken out the default with authenticator that comes from Amplify and actually created our own login screen and we manage our own state. This gives us much more flexibility, both around the screen that you use to log in, as well as controlling what users can see before and after they've logged in. As I promised at the start of this video, I'm going to link in the description a video of the full process I've gone through here, so you can follow through character by character as I build out this change. If you like this video setup where I have an overview and an in-depth view, make sure to let me know in the comments below as it helps me make the right content for you. And if you have learned something new in this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe down below as we've just hit 5,000 subscribers, which honestly is awesome to hear. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.